Large language models or LLMs completely dominate today's conversation around AI. Quite often, even some AI insiders refer to LLMs as massive auto-completion algorithms that simply output the next most likely word. But is this simplistic description accurate at all? This video is going to give you everything you need to know to understand how LLMs actually choose the next word. With the rise of frontier language models like ChatGPT, Claude, and Gemini, Developers have been focused on finding the optimal model among various API offerings and popular open source choices, such as Meta's Llama models. Much of this effort has been spent comparing model performance on platforms like the Chatbot Arena and examining benchmark results self-reported by the companies behind these models. However, one critical area has remained out of the limelight decoding strategies, the algorithms that determine how language models generate text. Both industry and academic research have largely focused on other areas, such as prompt engineering. Although useful, prompt engineering techniques are developed on top of a bedrock of anecdotal findings and might even become obsolete with future model iterations. Indeed, this might already be the case for the newest O1 model launched by OpenAI. On the other hand, deeper experimentation with token selection algorithms has been largely overlooked. These algorithms set the decision rules used to extract text strings from a model's probability estimates. And no matter how models evolve or training paradigms change, decoding strategies will remain a key component to language model-based text generation. So to set the ground for our discussion, let's recall some fundamentals of LLMs at a high level. In natural language modeling, we distinguish two separate phases. The modeling phase, how LLMs learn during training, and the decoding phase, how they generate text. During training, LLMs optimize an objective function to estimate the probability of the next word in a text sequence. And this process results in a statistical model of language. We can essentially summarize the breakthrough in LLM development of the last few years as the following empirical discovery. Optimizing this simple objective function through massive model scaling, both computational and in the amount of training data, effectively models human language. And this partly explains why LLMs are sometimes described as next word predictors. But this description can lead to some confusion about the inner workings of LLMs in the decoding phase. When generating text, LLMs can in fact employ a variety of algorithmic strategies that utilize their internal statistical model of language for text generation. In other words, a trained LLM provides a mathematical function that acts as a probability estimator within any specific text generation algorithm, that is, a decoding strategy. So the correct way to think about LLM decoding is rather the following. An LLM can be used to explore or search the space of all possible text sequences. In theory, even at different levels of granularity. Think words, sentences, and paragraphs, or even more abstractly, differentiating between drafting, planning, and developing phases. The specific method used to search this space is called a decoding strategy. And the choice of a particular decoding strategy can impact a model's quality along different dimensions, from task-specific performance, where different strategies may be more suitable for creative tasks versus more predictable or structured outputs, to inference speed, which determines the computational cost per generated word for a model of a given size. Language model decoding is the process by which an LLM generates text. And with text here, we really mean the series of symbols or tokens that represent it. In fact, the transformer, which is the underlying architecture of all current language models, is really a general tool that can input sequences of tokens and output sequences of tokens. Whether these tokens are meant to represent words, image data, genetic sequences, audio, or other forms of coherent signals is a matter of design. For open-ended text generation, the goal of LLM decoding can be abstractly described as follows. Given an input sequence of tokens S, we want to choose continuation of n additional tokens that form the completed sequence S prime. This continuation should be contextually coherent as an extension of the given input. But how do we quantify contextual coherence for this continuation? We do so by using the probability function provided by a language model. Trained on human-generated text sequences, an LLM estimates the probability distribution over the vocabulary of tokens given any sequence S. So a language model can be pictured as a function that maps a token sequence to a vector of probability. What are the numbers or entries in this vector? Well, for any token X in the model's vocabulary, the list of all possible tokens, we have the probability of X conditioned on the sequence S. This number represents the likelihood that the token X would follow the sequence S. With this, we can compute the probability of any completed sequence, any sentence if you want, based on the probability chain rule, where the probability of a sequence is decomposed into a product of probabilities of a single token conditioned to a sequence. Note that this approach to computing text probabilities really defines causal language modeling. Other approaches exist, but this one is the dominant method for text generation. Now, with 
with this foundation, we can describe the general schema of any decoding strategy in the context of open-ended text generation. Step one, given the current context sequence S, sample a token X from the model's distribution conditioned on the sequence S. Step two, update the context sequence to S prime, S followed by X, and then repeat steps one and two until a termination condition is met. Typically, this happens when the model predicts a special token, a symbol that represents the end of sequence. Now, in this general framework, the choice of method by which we sample X from the distribution in step one is precisely what distinguishes different strategies. So let's get more concrete now and see two basic examples of deterministic methods. Deterministic here means that the same input always generates the same output, so there is no randomness in the process. The the simplest decoding strategy for language models is called greedy search. It is the most straightforward approach. At each step, choose the token X as the most likely token given the context sequence S. Spoiler alert, despite what many people think, this is not how current conversational language models actually produce text. It can be slightly counterintuitive, but note that this strategy doesn't necessarily produce the most likely overall sequence. It just picks the most likely token at each individual step. Choosing a less probable token at one step could well lead to a more probable overall sequence in subsequent steps. To visualize this, imagine the process as exploring a probability tree. Greedy search only explores a single branch of this tree, the one that seems most promising at each step. To find the actual most likely likely sequence, one would have to explore the full tree of all possible token combinations, which is computationally infeasible for any practical text length due to the size of the vocabulary, often of the order of 30 to 60,000 tokens. In fact, despite its computational efficiency, greedy search doesn't generally produce high quality text and it is empirically found to output generic and dull text in the setting of open-ended generation. Beam search is the natural generalization of greedy search, offering a way to explore multiple branches of the probability tree. Instead of just picking the next token with the highest probability, it maintains a whole beam of the k most probable sequences at each time step, where k is referred to as the beam width. Depending on the beam size, this method produces higher quality text than greedy search, but it can be slower due to more computations. More precisely, the algorithm works as follows. Consider the top k most probable next tokens for each sequence in the current beam, where the initial beam consists of only the input sequence. Then expand each sequence with these k tokens, creating k new candidate sequences for each existing sequence. Finally, update the current beam by selecting the top k sequences among these candidates. By maintaining multiple candidate sequences, beam search can effectively look ahead in the probability tree potentially finding higher probability sequences that greedy search might miss. The beam width, the chosen parameter k, determines the trade-off between the depth of exploration, with larger k, and computational efficiency, with smaller k. However, beam search often falls short in open-ended text generation tasks. Both qualitative studies involving human preferences and quantitative analysis, comparing the variance in human-generated text versus beam search, have revealed patterns of degeneration in beam search outputs. In fact, while beam search sequences generally have high likelihood scores, they lack the natural variance and diversity characteristic of human written text. This can manifest with frequent repetitions of phrases, as well as a tendency to use a less varied vocabulary to examples of so-called neural text degeneration, as this is referred to in the literature. So the natural question is, how can we introduce more variance and unpredictability into the generated text while still maintaining overall coherence and high likelihood? It turns out that an essential step is to introduce some degree of randomness into the decoding process. This leads us to so called stochastic methods for text generation, which is the topic I covered in another video. So that's all from me today. I hope you enjoy the content and see you in the next video. It may seem a little counterintuitive, but after model training, it turns out that in text generation or decoding, randomness is essential to allow language models to search the infinite space of possible text sequences in an effective way.